Hey yo guys, welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today is our final review of Phantom Anthem from August Burns Red. Alright yo, so listen to this album a lot as we always do. Took it in, soaked it in like the pleasant sunshine on a nice summery day. And yeah, I got some stuff to say. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about, I guess, my favorite song on the album. There was one song that stood out to me among, uh, amongst the rest, quite significantly, I should say. Now, I know you like The Visible Enemy, and you can talk about that in a minute, but there's a song, I like that song too, but there's a song that stood out to me, and that's Quake. Really, really love Quake. Best song on the album, by far. Read in the comments on the um, First Impressions video, and I don't think I've seen anybody talk about Quake at all, which surprised me. Now, one of the reasons I like Quake is because, to me, August Burns Red as a, as a whole is a very, like, riff-oriented band. I like the riffs. They have, they're have they very, they're known for having very, like, technical riff riffing and stuff like that. I guess the whole medical genre is kind of known for that, but Quake has the best riff on the entire album. Just the main riff of the song is just super epic. Love the riff. I don't know. It reminds me almost of, like, a power metal riff. Not exactly sure why, but I don't know, I just love it. And I kept listening to it over and over again. The song's also got some of the best breakdowns on the album. All in all, just very, very well put together song. Favorite on the album, bar none. Second to that, another song that is pretty great is Dangerous. I'd say second best riffs on the album. Great riffs on Dangerous. And there's actually this one little part which it kind of like, I don't want to say it like tones down or whatever, but it kind of gets a little like, it gets dangerous. That's what it does, it gets <laughs> dangerous. And like, that's like a, an adjective I use for music sometimes where like, there's like some like, low, like dangerous sounding like riffs. Tension. Tension, yeah, like it almost reminds me of like the Jaws thing, like da 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 that kind of thing. And I remember I was listening to it in the car and I was like, fuck, this sounds dangerous. What's this song called? And I look over at my my phone and I'm like, oh, it's dangerous. What? The? <laughs> like, whatever, right? But yeah, like, um, both those songs, I'd say, stand out you know, this much above the rest of the album. The rest of the album kind of just good songs, but they all kind of blended together. They all kind of sound like one big happy family. But those two songs kind of poked out at me. There was no songs that I thought was, was bad or below any other songs. But those two songs definitely poked out a little bit. All right, to mention another thing about Dangerous, I really, really love, well, that song, I, you know, it's not my absolute favorite. I feel like that's still Invisible Enemy. I've talked enough about that song last week, but it really passed the stress test because I listen to that song over and over. Like, even when I have this album on shuffle, when that one comes on, I have to listen to it multiple times because of how good that song is. Like, that one's, like, up here. The album is, like, here. That song is up here. You wow, know? So that's like top song for you? No, top song. But Dangerous has one of the coolest breakdowns on this entire album. Yeah. It's so mean, it's it's oh, it gets you going. It's I think that would be a really cool song for them to play live. It is a pretty generic breakdown though, as far as like the band and the genre stuff goes, but it's well executed. They they play it, it's tight, it's heavy, and it works, man. They don't you don't need to go and make these like extravagant, you know breakdowns that are all unique and original sometimes just a basic breakdown works and that's what it did exactly one small thing that i liked about a different song called lifeline overall that song was not my favorite but when i guess for lack of a better term when it tones down when yep. it gets a little bit quieter the there was a guitar solo over that section and it sounds so beautiful mm -hmm. i love that solo i love the atmosphere it gives it really gives me a kind of the faceless vibe Yep. From uh, from that, and I'm like, Whoa. like I listen to that. If I had no context, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like the Faceless. And uh, I'm a huge Faceless fan, so that that was a really good um, kind of thing for me to notice there. But uh, another song that I felt was good, but a little bit tainted, was Generations. Interesting. Because the song itself is wicked. I love how it starts. I love how it ramps up. Not uh, not too long into it, it's great. And then it kind of stops. Mm -hmm. And get, it's this really corny, generic kind of... It's that motivational part. Motivational. You got the singer stops, he starts talking, he's like all out of breath, you know. Take a step back, and we take it all in. Like, I don't even know what he's saying, but it's, all, it's supposed to be like... At a live show, 
those types of moments in songs are like epic. Oh yeah, you really feel it, especially if it's during the, like near the end of the set and you're already sweaty, you've been in the mosh pit all night and just you know, and then that part happens, you really you feel it. You really it gets to you like on an emotional level. But hearing it on an album, especially when they've done it before on other songs, it's kind of becoming a regular thing that they do. It's kind of getting old. So I know what you mean, but I do like the part. It just, yeah, they need to they need to maybe switch it up a bit or stop doing it so much, but it feels like they do that type of part too much. I mean, it doesn't ruin the song for me. It just kind of bugs me when I get there because it's such a cool song and then that happens and it yeah. kind of just, yeah. Although you are, I, I agree with you that it's really cool live, I bet. Like after, you know, such a long concert, you have this and it's just... Yeah. Such a big spectacle for uh, yeah. the audience, but yeah. listening to it on the album kind of doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. Well, they break it down, right? Like it breaks down, it's almost like quiet, and you know the audience is gonna be singing along. Like I just think of live, it'd be a really good live song, but listening to it on the album, it just doesn't have the same effect because you're just at home or in your car or, or wherever, wherever you are, and you don't have that you don't have that energy flowing through you like you would if you're at a show. So hearing it on an album, it almost feels corny, like you said, and you want to just kind of almost skip it. But when you listen to it, like I said, live, it's much different, much better experience. So one thing I noticed throughout this whole album is that at first when stuff was starting to jump out at me more, I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm kind of liking all the proggier sounding tunes like coordinates, like the frost, etc. But then, you know, the longer I would listen to this album, I look at the track listing, and almost every single song I can look at say, yeah, something aw awesome happens in that song, something awesome happens in that one, and that yeah. one, and that one, and like every track has something really great about it that That's I can true. think about and be like, yeah, something awesome does happen in that track. That's true. They all have at least a part, or a section, or a, a riff, or a beat, or a fill, or something in there that is it's memorable. Awesome. Memorable, yeah. yes, yes. Um... But overall, though, what is your overall thought? And let's say, what's your rating on it? Let's let's do that. Let's go ahead. I thought this was a really cool album that definitely grew on me, as you know, all albums will do on people. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I said, every track I look at, I'm like, yeah, that one, that one, that one. And they, they just every song, despite how last week we said kind of melted together, had something stand out about them. And for that, I say it gets my toe tag because. Some of these songs are just slamming, man. Mm -hmm. Especially Invisible Enemy. I already said, but oh my god, that song is it amazing. Turns it up to turns it up to eleven oh. or twelve. Man, love that song. Anyway, what's your score for this album? Well, I I did enjoy this album. Um, I think it's solid. Uh, we mentioned the musicianship in our first impressions video. It's top notch. These guys perform very well. Um, the, the biggest downfall I have is, I don't know how to word it to a point where it doesn't sound like, like it's the lack of diversity. And what I mean is, again, we talked about this in the first impressions video, is there's a couple songs that stand out. Like Quake I mentioned, the riffing on there is just a little different, it just stands out, it just seems a little more well thought out. Dangerous has a couple parts. You did mention, you know, um, Float has a couple things in it that, that are good, but the, the rest of the album, the whole album as a whole basically, just sounds too similar. And there's only a couple songs that stand out to me, and to me, unfortunately, that's just not enough to give a toe tag. Um, I really wanted to, I really want to put a metalcore album on our two toe tags list, but unfortunately, this is not going to be the one. I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. I hate the fact that you just gave it a toe tag and I'm not <laughs> giving it one, but it just doesn't, it doesn't hit that for me. We talked about this before, that a toe tag album has to hit this special spot. And as much as I like this album and enjoy listening to it, it doesn't hit that spot. And I really think the lack of diversity and the lack of uniqueness, I feel like they played it safe. Um, they did do their whole, you know, more progressive route like they did with um, Found in Faraway Places, but I feel like this was just Found in Faraway Places version 2.0. And that to me is not good enough. I want something a little more, I want something a little more memorable. And out of 11 songs, if I can only pick out two that are memorable, that to me is not good enough. So even still a solid album, still a 7 out of 10 for me, toe tag for him. It's worth listening to, it's worth checking out if you guys haven't already. But let us know what you guys think of it below. Do you guys agree with our ratings? Do you agree with what we said in the video? And yeah, be sure to like and leave your comments below and subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. But that's pretty much it. Yep.
Don't buy yourself. I'm TV Fish. I'll see you guys on the next one.